Come see us on tour of me in Tempe, Arizona with a special celebrity guest on that show. Columbus, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, Burbank, California, and Honolulu. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. African Stream. Did you hear about this? Hey, here's some more censorship. African Stream has been banned by Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We were censored after U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken made false, unsubstantiated claims against us. So that's all the, all the government has to do is make an accusation. And YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, they just immediately censor you. That's all they have to do is make an So they did it with the saying, oh, Russia is, remember that, uh, what was it called, that uh, Tim Pool got caught up in it? Uh what was the name of that company? Anyway, it said, hey, this, what was it? Metro Media? I forget the name of it. Uh, they go, oh, they're, they're taking money from Russia. Well, they didn't say Russian government. They just, they just said Russia. So, again, let's let's wait till this. Every time they, they say a lot of things. They said that Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation and propaganda. It wasn't. But the YouTube, it, Facebook, they just immediately act on whatever the government tells them to do. Uh, so to be clear, contrary to this ac a accusation, African Stream does not receive any funding from any state. We will shortly release a full statement regarding our work, our funding, and these accusations. We are currently consulting our legal team. We want to thank. So let's watch. Here's what was it, it? Tenant? Yeah, Tenant Media. So I can't wait to hear what the full story is on Tenant Media. But here, here, let's listen to this. RT also secretly runs the online platform African Stream. So that's that's not true. So again, the biggest liars, and according to African Stream, that's nothing. None of that's true. That's not true. So the biggest liars are the government. Always, everyone knows that. And then second is corporate media, and then third are people like African Stream or randos on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. A distant third. The biggest liars are are these guys. They lied about every war in my lifetime. They're currently lying about Ukraine, and they lied about uh, Israel stopping aid supply to the Palestinians. They lied about that. So they lie all the time. So now they're making up a lie about African stream. Watch this. RT also secretly runs the online platform African Stream. Now, I'm going to guess it's because African Stream, which I wasn't aware of until this, tells the truth about what the United States is doing in Africa. And so you just say they're Russian, they're getting funding from Russian, boom, social media censors them. Just like that. If Anthony Blinken said Jimmy Dore was getting money from Russia, they wouldn't wait for a hearing. There wouldn't be a, a, a trial. They would just do it. Look what they did to Russell Brand. He had all these accusations, hit a hit piece and a couple of coordinated hit pieces in news in, in newspapers and or news outlets by anonymous people there's never been a criminal charge never been a civil case nothing but youtube demonetized them like that with no hearing no nothing and so they're doing the same thing doing worse the african stream they they're completely shutting them down check, check and see if african stream has a their YouTube channel up again. I don't think it does. RT also secretly runs the online platform African Stream across a wide range of social media platforms. Now, according to the outlet's website, African Stream is, and I quote, a pan-African digital media organization based exclusively on social media platforms, focusing on giving a voice to all Africans both at home and abroad. In reality, the only voice it gives is to Kremlin propagandists. So these are the people who told you Russiagate was real. These are the people who told you the uh, Trump campaign was working, colluding with Russia. They weren't. The Mueller report said there was zero evidence of that. These are the same people who told you that the Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian propaganda. It wasn't. It was real. These are the liars. So I've got to, I'm going to say, uh, I got to guess that everything he's saying here is a lie. What, what did you find? Shut down. So I'm going to guess everything he just said is a lie. African stream banned from Meta, Instagram, and Facebook. And Facebook. No, no, they don't get a hearing. Nothing. These are the types of uh, pots that the United States 
Secretary of State Santon Blinken is using to attack African Stream as an agent of Russia, as it as if Africans aren't clever enough to speak for themselves or have no clue of what is going on. Here's what she says. When we're talking about what's happening in Congo and the humanitarian crisis and talking about this concept of boycotting, I really need y'all who are on the fence about boycotting to understand that the cost of convenience does not have to be human lives. We are literally conditioned to think that in order for us to have certain things, someone somewhere has to suffer. And that is the furthest thing from the truth. And the only reason why they want you to believe that is because the real reason why people are working and dying in these horrendous working conditions, the reason why these people do not have access to clean water, clean clothes or shelter, but they're in their mining cobalt for BMW and Tesla and Nokia and Samsung and all of these other companies is because the people at the top want to make as much money as they possibly can under any condition. It's not so that their employees can get paid more. It's not so that they can give you a cheaper product. It's not because that's what it costs and there's no way for them to make it without doing the, it this way. It is 100% so that they can make an amount of money that they will not even be able to spend in this lifetime. That is the only reason why. Do not let anybody tell you anything otherwise because it's not the truth. I'm literally wearing a cotton shirt right now. I'm sure white people in the past tried to make it seem like without slaves, it would be impossible to produce cotton. And here we are with slavery abolished and people are still walking around wearing cotton. They'll find a way. Trust me. They will find a way. You have to force them. The only reason why they are continuing this way is because we are turning a blind eye. That's it. They know they can get away with it. And getting away with it means their pockets are lined. And they don't care if people live or die. They don't care at all. Obviously, human lives are not the cost of convenience. They don't have to be. They will find a way to make the product while giving these people livable wages, while giving these people a place to live, while making sure it's not children that are working in these conditions. Yes, maybe it takes longer to drop a new phone. Maybe you can't drop one every single year. Yes, maybe you have to be a little bit more diligent about production costs and things like that or whatever the case is. Don't even let them convince you that it's going to make it cost more because it actually doesn't. They might take a pay cut. Let them take the pay cut. I'm like, I'm sick of that concept that it's like, we're trying to, oh, so do we just want Apple to stop making phones? No, we want y'all to stop killing people. What does that have to do with phones? So that's the kind of stuff African Stream would put out. And that's what they don't want you to hear. They don't want you to hear about how you actually get the cobalt and the lithium and how it's mined in the Congo. They don't want you to know this. So... A statement from the team at African Stream. Okay, let's see what the statement says. African Stream has been viciously attacked and silenced by the greatest superpower in the world, the United States of America, on the basis of allegations emerging from Reddit rumors. On Friday, September 13th, the U.S. Secretary Anthony Blinken said, RT, so I just showed you what he said. Less than 24 hours after the statement, our channel was taken off YouTube. And less than 72 hours later, our pages were removed from Meta, that is, from Instagram, Facebook, and Threads. Across all four platforms, we had over 1.5 million followers. If we include TikTok and Twitter, we have over 2.5 million followers. It is likely only a matter of time before we are removed from those. Can you see if they're on Twitter? Uh, It is only a matter of time before we are removed from those platforms, too. Is this the democracy that the United States is always championing? Is this the United States truly the beacon of democracy as it actively clamps down on free speech and freedom of the press, both enshrined in the United Nations 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights, to which the United States is a signatory? The night here it is. Here's the here's from the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights states: Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. The right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive, and impart information and ideas through any media, regardless of frontier. So just so when what they're doing when they censor, they're not only censoring the person's ability to speak; they're censoring your ability to hear that person. You have a right to receive information, to seek information without interference. Apparently, those rules do not apply to anti-imperialist Africans living on the most exploited and plundered continent on Earth. To be clear, neither China, Russia, nor Iran taught us Africans about imperialism. We learned through our own blood history, bloody history, as victims and survivors of slavery, colonialism, and imperialism. That history and our pan-African heroes, many of whom the United States helped to assassinate or overthrow, is why we are anti-imperialist. The irony is that most of them were also accused of being Russian assets. 
Patrice Lumbana, Lumamba was called a Soviet-linked African Castro by the director of, by the CIA at the time, Alan Dulles. Lumumba was soon after killed by the United States and Belgian-backed forces via firing squad on the January 17, 1961. With most of his corpse then dissolved in acid and the rest burnt, leaving nothing but a single tooth that was buried on on DR Congo's 62nd independence anniversary, 61 years later. All conscious Africans know this history and know how one of the greatest Pan-African leaders and thinkers, Kwame Nkumba, was also accused of being a Soviet-linked communist shortly before he was overthrown in 1966 in a coup d'etat by the CIA-backed National Liberation Council under whose supervision the country's economy was privatized. This is nothing new. It is just the Red Scare 2.0 with a new Russian boogeyman and the same old target, pan-Africanists. Freedom-loving Africans have always been attacked by the United States apparatus. The greatest nightmare to the imperialist system is organized African forming Africans forming international connections able to reach other Africans and oppress peoples around the world. This is why Paul Robeson's U.S. passport was revoked in 1950 and why W.E.B. Du Bois' passport was revoked in 1951. This is why Claudia Jones was deported from the United States in 1955 and why Marcus Garvey was deported as early as 1927. Let us not forget that Marcus Garvey and his Universal Negro Improvement Association organization ran the most successful and widespread pan-African media publication of the early 20th century, Negro World. Need we remind you how Africans around the world had to smuggle in secret copies of Negro World so that Africans could read the journal? As is the case of Garvey, Lumumba, and Nakumra, the smear always came before the action to remove them from power. This is what happens to Africans. This is what happened to African Stream. First, they smeared us on the biggest stage possible, and then their intelligence agencies contacted YouTube and Meta to remove our platforms that were reaching an average of 20 million people every week. Why? Because we have an analysis that is not approved by the United States Department, the U.S. State Department. Is the so-called greatest democracy in the world really that insecure that a bunch of 20 and 30-year-old Africans can expose their whole strategy in Africa? We must say we are extremely flattered. The United States, the U.S. State Department, the entire government and intelligence apparatus know deep down that we are not acting out of Russian interests, but out of African interests. After failing to criminalize freedom-minded Africans under the unsuccessful Black Identity Extremist label established by the FBI in 2017, U.S. representatives have re resorted to another tool in their arsenal, racist patron pa patronization. They want the world to believe we Africans cannot think for ourselves, make our own decisions, and promote our own interests. They want you to believe that we must always have a boss, an overlord or a master dictating to us how we must act and think and what we must say and do. Today, they have chosen Russia as the alleged master that controls us. They cannot come out and say that they are targeting Africans because we are diametrically opposed to imperialist interests in Africa, so they depict us as servants of the Kremlin. They still cannot see Africans as anything other than slaves. Recently, three members of the Pan-African organization, African People's Socialist Party, were charged with being Russian Asians. They were acquitted, but await sentencing for conspiracy charges. On the plantation, rebellious Africans were always whipped and beaten to serve as an example to the others. Is that, are they talking about the Yuhurus that we just covered? I said, this is straight up government censorship. The people pushing World War III and nuclear war get to silence whoever they want, and there's nothing you can do about it. 
You don't live in a democracy. America is an authoritarian oligarchy disguised as a democracy. Enjoy your serfdom. The billionaires have won. So that's a sad story. Uh, yes, they're on Twitter. So they're still allowed to be on Twitter. We'll see. Elon Musk just caved to Twitter to uh, censorship demands from the CIA and the government in in Brazil. So if they demand it here, I'm sure he'll cave to them here too. So there you go. The billionaires have won. The billionaires who controlled the U.S. government. You think that the politicians do? As Bibi Netanyahu says, don't be naive. Come see us on tour of being Tempe, Arizona with a special celebrity guest on that show. Columbus, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, Burbank, California, and Honolulu. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. Mm-hmm.